Hey everybody, how it going? Happy leap year! Yes, dude. Once in what is it? Every four years? Crazy. The current calendar. Uh, never mind. I'm not even gonna get into that. <coughs> um, first of all, sorry guys, I didn't post on Sunday. I made this video um, about to save my plants. Right? I have these banana jealousy. Um, and what is it? Gelato 41 back cross. And they were just doing awful. I hadn't taken care of them. Hadn't looked at them, um, in like a month. And I was like, I can save these. Right. I posted a picture of it on my discord and they were, you know, I thought they would be savable. Um, they're still holding on, but I found that my cat has been going to the bathroom in them. Um, so the video that I had made was like to start this new little project. Oh, can I save these plants? But after my cat peed in them like a bunch, um, I don't think it's worth saving them now. <coughs> anyway, um, tonight we are going to What Up, Clint King, Caitlin Campbell, Andre, Django. What's up, everybody? Um, so we're going to discuss Blaze. Um, it's probably going to be kind of a shorter stream tonight. I, um, feel like shit. And I ate one of these Delta eight gummies, dude. It's crazy. I, I, I just like regular weed. It's, it's wild that they can get away with that and just ship it all over the country. I think it's a Utah based edible company and they do all different kinds of, um, adaptogenic herbs and mushrooms and distillate of CBD, CBG, CBN, THCA, probably, well, not yet. Delta eight. Um, pretty good. Pretty freaking good. I've left the code in my description. So you guys want to try them um anyways yeah i'm just high and not feeling great so we're gonna do this fast blaze let's talk about it we opened up um sign up on patreon so if you guys are interested in signing up for the citizen science project botanical latitude and zone evaluation um you gotta hop on over to the patreon and you can fill out the initial survey. So the goal of this is to sort of just have like a beta test to figure out the best form of data analysis and um, basically representation in every region and just like work out the kinks this year and then open it up to a broader audience next year. So we only have 100 um, participant availability. <coughs> um oh yeah mr django that's what i ate i just had one fucking really good i like the stress one a little bit better than the delta eight one but okay i digress so sign up for blaze if you want to participate we have room right now but it's filling up quickly and you can be a part of cannabis cultivation history um no but it it, it really is the first of its kind um Yep, only 100 this year. I know. Um, but that's a lot of, you know, data to an analyze. We want to make sure, like I said, that there's somebody from every region, all different latitudes, so we can kind of compare and see, um, you know, have useful information to gather from it. So pretty excited. The first episode of the podcast, Sun Grown Stories, which is following this citizen science Grow Along project is going to be live on YouTube. Well, a teaser. Um, and everywhere you listen to podcasts on Saturday at 420. Hands cold. How many plants will it be? Um, well, the I believe it's going to be three packs of or a seed, three seeds in a pack of the triploid OG and three seeds of the OG Kush um, diploid. So six plants, but listen to your local laws, regulations. Some places you can only grow four outdoors. So um, whatever your 
law and locality says to do that's like how many plants right <laughs> um but yeah that's what you're gonna get from us and so not only are we going to be able to see how these strains do in regions across the U.S., I mean, we're going to see differences when they start flowering, um, when we can plant them outdoors, when we can harvest them. But we're going to be able to see side by side if the triploid really does flower two weeks earlier. Is it really a lot bigger? Is it really going to produce way more resin yield with the same inputs right that's kind of what they um you know that's what they're saying these claims of the triploid so not only are we going to be able to see it in different environments but that is a whole nuanced layer that it's going to be pretty cool um stephen polk tried to find the survey on patreon but couldn't find it help um so it was posted yesterday and it's in the last post there's a link so with the um podcast episode i linked it in there so the podcast episode comes out to the public on saturday but patrons get ad free early access oh god early access so um it's available now on patreon and that's where the survey link is too so um send me a direct message on patreon <clears throat> Yes, Caitlin Campbell. So you guys signed up, you signed up, you got through, but now you have to fill out an initial survey intake form. So this is going to be collecting information like what's your zip code, right? Because your zip code is going to um <coughs> sorry. Your zip code is going to give us, you know, like a general area. We don't want invasion of privacy. We just want to know like your latitude, your hardiness zone. So we can organize everyone into groups. Um, and we'll probably send out seeds in different batches because they've been sold out for like since they dropped them. I mean, it's crazy. They didn't realize how popular they were going to be. So it's that's another reason we can only do 100 is because it's just They've already sold. They've already sold out of seeds, and they saved some for us. And then they're harvesting more in a few weeks. So, um, yep. Cam says he's running it indoors with the donuts trips, and they grow way faster than any other plant. Yay! I'm so excited. This is gonna be fun. Um, you know, we get to share pictures with each other. We're all growing the same thing across the country. It's like I don't. Yeah. I feel like that's every stoner grower's dream, right? You're not only taking that comp that layer of like grow diaries or whatever, but you're doing it with the exact same strain outside and hopefully creating a meaningful and impactful data that can shape outdoor growing zones. And the reason why I think that this is so important is because for so long we've been kept in our fucking garages, basements, closets, whatever, right? as a home grower. And now we're seeing legalization opening up this opportunity to grow outside. But in the last, you know, 20 years, our genetics have really been bred fully indoors and they're super hybridized. And it's like, we don't have the information collected on how they do outside. These are a ton of new strains in the last 20 years, right? Um, so you'll have people who want to grow outdoors and then they grow a strain that's not suitable for their environment and their climate. And then they think, oh, outdoor growing sucks. There's too many variables, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think there's a time and a place for sure for indoors. I'm not anti-indoor. Um, I just think that <clears throat> it's really fun to grow outside. If we have the opportunity to do it, we should. Um, and growing strains that are specific that will do well that will thrive in your area is possible you can figure this out right now by like you know looking up the land race genetics that make up that dominate your strain and then compare your climate to that climate and then also what else has been bred into it where that's from and um, then look at the terpene profile, secondary metabolite profile, like if it holds specific compounds that do well, like antimicrobial, um, you know, antifungal, like limonene. And then you think about like, what is your ecosystem like? What, are, what kind of bugs are there? What's the humidity like? And, um, 
you know, this is a whole process, but a new grower who just buys a pack of seeds isn't going to know this. So, you know, they grow something like, um, you know, a long flowering time sativa in a super short growing season. And then they're just like bummed out um, that, you know, it didn't work out for them or they do something super chunky and it's a really humid area and they don't know pruning and they get mold or the caterpillars cause the mold. So um, there's different strains that are resistant to different things. And so learning all of that is just, it's fun, but it makes it so that you have to pay attention to the natural world around you. And that can be difficult for a uh, first time grower. And so I think that this, we will be able to like learn and, um, share our experiences and hopefully just be able to like type in your zip code and be like, Oh yeah, here's, you know, the top 20 strains in my, that I should grow in my area. That's like, you know, the hopes, the dreams, the goals of this project. Um, so with your help, we can make this a reality and sign up today, Patreon, the survey's up, we'll get you categorized and then figure out seed codes. The Humboldt Seed Company is sending everything directly to you. Um, I am looking to get sponsors so we can have a bunch of prizes and they'll be awarded for participation in the grow along, like best data collector, you know, <laughs> um, or the underdog, somebody who went through like the most adversity outside and still pulled off a successful crop. Because let's face it, you know, it's an experiment. We're all growing OG Kush, which we'll have a whole episode about OG Kush on the podcast. So tune in, listen this Saturday super freaking excited. We put a lot of freaking work into this. Cat Lady's here. She's just been kicking ass on this. Um, we've got an editor guy, Optine, who's just been great. Um, and I've just been talking to like Seedsman and Skunk Magazine and they're supporting this. I mean, obviously Humboldt Seed Company sponsored it, but Seedsman wants to help in every way possible. Skunk Magazine does. And I think it's going to be really fun for the community to do this together. And then next year, you know, we open it up and we get a lot of people in and more people are going to grow outside and be comfortable with it. And like, just focus on this outdoor sun grown because I think that there's different reasons to grow. And if you're uh, just a consumer, patient, um, looking for medicine for yourself or your family, growing a few plants outside, in addition, um, you know, if you can, in addition to whatever else you have going on, is always a good idea. Like getting outside and being under the sun, having the microbes under your fingernails. I mean, I guess you get that indoors too, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just the whole thing. So I'm stoked. I'm excited. I can hear my baby boy crying. I don't feel great. So I'm going to read through the com comments because I haven't been paying attention to this. I'm high. Um, and then probably let you guys go. I know that this is a really short live stream, but I feel like shit. <clears throat> so it has to be sun grown. Yes. Yes. The whole thing, this whole project is sun grown. So um, I'm sorry if you can't grow outdoors. Like if you want, I'll send milkweed seeds because we need more milkweed for the monarchs, y'all. Um, but yeah, the OG Kush has to be grown outdoors. So yeah, I'm excited for the OG Kush. Harvest that in two weeks. Your Afghan Kush, nice. Um, yeah, you can train the plants, top them. They don't need to be natural. Um, we'll have questions, um, about that. Like, did you top your plant? Where did you top it? Um, you know, when did you prune? Are you defoliating like 20, 40, 60? Because that makes a huge impact on how a plant grows, um, and the health of it. So if you have somebody, if you just let it go completely natural, um, you know, you might run into more problems like mold issues or um, even just being seen. Like maybe you have a confined space where you can't grow above a fence line. Like I'm not going to limit you from growing because of that. I just want we just want to collect as much data as possible about what you're doing, because that definitely, you know, topping a plant manipulates the hormone count. If you have all of those auxins in the 
tops and you top it, then you're changing that whole plant's hormones, which then is a cascading effect of secondary metabolites, which can invite or deter pests. So, um, <clears throat> Mr. Django, you're a hunter. Send whatever you want to see growing. Well, are you going to grow it outside? <laughs> um, yes, outdoors is the way to go. Then how can they say they are checking the whole country? I don't know what you mean by that, Rusty Nails. Um, <clears throat> but all right, everybody, any questions? Have a vermicompost bin to help with the grow. Awesome, awesome. Um, thank you guys for being here, fighting to evil. So again, if you want to participate, check it out, patreon.com. Um, the description's in the show notes. And I look forward to growing together. Don't forget to check back for the next episode. Um, thank you, Cam. And red state's not welcome. Everyone, I cannot give you advice of legal advice or tell you what to do um, in your home. Seeds can be sold legally and shipped across the United States because of the farm bill. Um, it is not, you know, I am indemnifying myself from anything that you do. And this is a completely anonymous survey. So, um, you know, like to an extent and you, you know, you make your own decisions. So, <clears throat> yes. Um, thank you guys. Good night. And yes, I hope I feel better. I'm going to go smoke some more and eat. Good night.